you want to retire early, you want to retire by age 55, I'm going to help you, okay? Here's what you need to do in order to retire at age 55. Coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, do you have an aggressive goal for retirement? Do you? I, I wanna help you, okay? So as a certified financial planner on a team of CFPs, we work with folks all day, every day, trying to get them from where they are today to achieving whatever that financial goal is they're trying to achieve. Most people are trying to achieve multiple financial goals, have peace of mind while they're doing it, and manage risk as well. So there's a lot involved when you're doing comprehensive financial planning. Most common financial goal, even though you yeah, had to pay off debt and buy a certain house and help kids with college and whatever, take vacations each year, buy new vehicles, that sort of stuff. Yes, those are things that your CFP should be helping with and, and we do as well. The most common financial goal is retirement though. And on average, if someone's shooting to retire 65, 66, something like that, they tend to retire a couple years sooner than that. The research is, is suggests that. We've seen that as well. We've talked about it a lot on the Wise Money Show. Um, and so you've gotta be prepared potentially early that a health change or a job change or some other circumstance pushes you into retirement sooner than your original plan. You've gotta be ready for that. Uh, COVID, yeah, tons, a ton of people retired sooner than they expected because of COVID, okay? But do you have an aggressive retirement goal? Are you trying to retire early and not just early, 55? Guys, if you would've asked me in my 20s, that was my magic number. If you'd ask me today, I'd say, I wanna retire tomorrow. Now, I love what I do, um, but, but, uh, but yeah, 55 was my magic, was my magic age, and uh, that's not what I'm shooting for now, but back then, that's what I was shooting for, and still, a lot of people, I don't know what it is about that number, but uh, if you're gonna retire early, a lot of people land on that age 55 number, so how can you do it? Can you do it? Yes. How do you do it? I'm gonna help you right now. First thing you gotta figure out is health insurance, okay? Retiring at 55, you're not eligible for Medicare until 65. A lot of politicians, they've been trying to figure that out. Medicare for all, early Medicare, blah, blah, blah. They haven't figured it out yet. It's gonna be wildly expensive, so seems like an uphill climb. Will we figure it out at some point? I, maybe, I'm not gonna debate that right now. Right now, Medicare, you're eligible at 65. If you're trying to retire at 55, I would argue the first thing you gotta figure out is health insurance. I can't tell you how many people we're seeing that financially they're, they're able to retire, and then they look and they're like, how much is health insurance gonna cost? And wait, that's sort of a, an unknown territory for me. I'm gonna keep working. So then I don't have to worry about health insurance. I'll keep making money. And so if you're trying to retire at 55, you gotta figure out health insurance. Now, good news is COBRA is available for 18 months, most likely. No, that's not good news. I was being sarcastic. And the other good news is it's typically wildly expensive. Yeah, sarcastic there as well. So COBRA in itself is not gonna cut it. Do you have retiree medical? where you work for an employer that if you, you had a contract, typically these are unions or, or pension covered jobs where if you work for a certain number of years, then you're going to get to stay on a retiree medical system, retire, uh, retiree medical plan, where you're still only paying a portion of what the overall premium is. If you do, I'm gonna tell you right now, you already have a leg up on early retirement if you've got that available to you. That's not available to most. It used to be, it's not anymore. So retiree medical, if that's you, fantastic. You've, you, you've solved one of the biggest problems right there. Uh, if it's not you, then you've gotta explore what are your other options. Okay, COBRA might be an option, an expensive option for a small period of time. But then after that, are you looking at a share plan? Are you looking at uh, Affordable Care Act? You've got to work with your CFP and figure that out. Love, love the tax advantages with Affordable Care Act, but that's comprehensive financial planning because your taxable income needs to look really low. You've got to solve this monster. So there are options there, but the, the, next, the next thing you've got to figure out is income, okay? Social Security, isn't available until 62 at the earliest. It may be 60 if you're a widow, um, but 62 at the earliest. But at that point, you are reducing your benefit by a significant amount. So it might make sense to even delay Social Security if you can. But if you're retiring at 55, you've got at least seven years before you're on that government fixed income, okay? So how are you gonna fill in that gap? 
if you have a pension that you're eligible for, that likely, I mean, that greases the skids. Most folks that are trying to retire at 55 and, and, and don't own a business or have some other unique talent that offers a unique salary, they've got retiree medical and a pension, and that helps them bridge this gap between retiring and Medicare and retiring and Social Security. If you don't have a pension, do you have real estate income? That's, that's kind of the second most common area for folks that are trying to retire sooner. This FIRE movement, financial independence, retire early, is typically on the backs of, of real estate. I would argue you're retiring from your main job, but you still have a job where you're sort of a landlord. And that's fine though, that, that's fine. It beats the day in the office, I'm sure. But you've got to figure out income. If it's not those things, you've got to then figure out portfolio income and the taxation of it as well. But so the second, the second uh, the solution you've got to figure out, the second problem you've got to come up with a solution for is income if you're going to retire at 55. The third, I just started going there and I backed off because it's to me, it's a separate area. You've got to figure out tax diversification. If, let's say, if you don't have a pension or even if you do, but you need to supplement it, right? And, uh, and you're retiring at age 55, where are you gonna draw money from? Can you draw money? Can you get income from your IRA? No, you're not yet age 59 and a half. You can do some more advanced strategies, substantially equal periodic payments, but you're locked into that. And it's not a great calculation right now because interest rates are so low. So can you get access to it? Yeah, you'd have to pay a penalty or you'd need to lock yourself up into some long-term commitment. I don't love it, okay? What about your 401k? Some 401ks allow you to access your 401k without penalty as long as you retire in the year you're gonna turn 55 or later. Fantastic. Does your 401k offer that or do you have a simple IRA or does your 401k not offer that feature? You've got to figure out where you're going to be able to tap your portfolio and the solution is figuring out tax diversification. Typically what this means is throughout your career, you're max funding those tax shelters, but you're also stuffing some money aside in a non IRA non-tax sheltered account that you can pull money from and not have to worry about it being uh, ordinary income or taxable to you. Why? If you do that, then you can live off of those resources, make your taxable income re look really low, and that allows you to solve that first problem with this health, which is health insurance. Your tax situation looks really low, you're eligible for those premium tax credits, you can get Affordable Care Act actually at affordable cost, okay? So the third problem you've gotta solve, if you're gonna try to retire at 55, you're gonna try to retire early, is tax diversification. And the fourth is, is, is fairly obvious. You got to build up a bigger investment portfolio in less time, a bigger portfolio in less time. So yes, all these sort of cliche things that we all wish and hoped, yeah, you needed to start early, you're gonna have to start early. And not only is just start early, you're gonna need to fund a lot starting early. So starting early and saving 5% or 6%, likely not gonna cut it unless you've got pension, unless you've got some other, some other benefits to you. So starting early and saving a lot is what will help you build that bigger portfolio in less time. Why is that important? Because if you're gonna try to retire at 55 as opposed to say 65, you're gonna have to reduce risk 10 years sooner. And that money needs to last 10 years longer. Your retirement is now longer. We have no idea your life expectancy or when you're gonna pass away. If we did, we'd be able to draw the perfect financial plan. We don't know, okay? So you gotta assume that retiring 10 years earlier at 55, your retirement's gonna be 10 years longer. So you need a bigger nest egg, but because you're retiring sooner and you're gonna start pulling dollars off of, uh, out of that nest egg sooner, you're gonna have to reduce the risk sooner. So start saving earlier and save even more. To me, the bridge to this is typically looking and saying, all right, here's how much you've saved up. How much will you need to spend over these next 10 years until Social Security starts or whatever it is? Take those dollars, make them very low risk and short term, and just sort of slaughter the hog, as I call it, okay? Slaughter the fattened calf. It's ugh, a bad analogy, okay? Sorry, but basically, hey, we've fed this thing and now we're just gonna digest it. This little chunk, we're just gonna eat this over the next five, 10 years. And then this, these other dollars are still long-term and we can invest those for the future. Typically, that's the type of strategy that you're working on. But you've gotta start early, okay? And you've gotta save a lot to build up a bigger investment portfolio sooner than you otherwise would. Those are the four ways, the four problems you need to solve in order to retire at 55, you can do it. 
You can do it. Got to get started early with your certified financial planner working on that five-factor retirement plan you've heard me talk about time and again. Figuring out when you want to retire, how much you're going to spend, what your income sources are, what your social security strategy is, how much you've saved up, how much you need to save up, and how much risk you're going to take with those investments. That's your five-factor retirement plan. You got to see how each of those factors interrelate together and 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 kind of influence when you're able to retire or how much you need to save, how much risk and all that sort of stuff. So work with your CFP on that. I've helped people retire at 55, I've helped people retire sooner than that, okay? Um, it takes a lot of intentionality, a lot of careful planning, comprehensive financial planning. So are you on track? Work with your CFP right now. If you don't have a CFP, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com, that's corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us there as well. Give us a call, 574 247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.